good evening to everybody. As you might imagine, I'm a sister of Samson, <coughs> and I have the longest history knowing him among all of you, <laughs> because I'm the elder sister, <laughs> one year older. So this is Which our... You cannot guess. This is me, and this is you. <laughs> and this is our father, and this is our mother. So we have exactly one year and two weeks difference, and uh, I probably know him just right a few days after he was born. And uh, so our parents were father, father uh, physicist. My mother is still alive, mathematician. And uh, it's Samson in maybe one and a half or two. So he was very active, very sweet, very kind, and always uh, playing uh, active uh, things. And already from that time, he's driving a car, <laughs> you can see. And it's maybe our, I'm 10, he's nine or something around. And he was climbing, you know, it was difficult to stop him, but he was not uh, spoiling anything. In fact, he was observing and studying and <laughs> trying to invent something. And uh, maybe it is uh, around 10 also. He was very much interested in chess. Our father was, uh, parallel to being physicist, a good chess player, Grossmeister. And by that time, um, he gave up playing, but he was uh, chief referee of Tbilisi. So he was very often going to chess palace, and Samson would follow. And here are very famous uh, uh, Georgian chess players are here, and some of them trainers, even this one is trainer, I guess. And so here is my brother. And then you can recognize some of you are sitting here. So this is uh, the time when he, when he already uh, went to Leningrad uh, as a PhD student. You know, uh, in between, we studied uh, always to get the same place, like in kindergarten, the school. Only three years he went to physical, mathematical, special school. Otherwise, then I went to physics faculty. Next year he came to the same faculty, so we were always together. But uh, at some stage, he decoupled, let's say. He went to Leningrad, and after that, uh, I'm seeing him uh, rarely and more rarely, and I'm thankful to organizers to arrange this very dense <laughs> meeting with my brother. So here is Karepin, you can see, this is Atiyah. Yeah, this is you. Do you have this photo? Yeah. yeah. So this is Samson. Slim. He was always slim. Lately, he became not slim, unfortunately. <laughs> so he's sat here. This, this, this one, I don't know. Maybe one of you remember. Antonov. Ah, Antonov. Yeah. Antonov. Yeah. Uh, so and here is all the group. That was Michael Atiyah. So Tahtar, Jankulish, Novikov, Padev, Samson, uh, Karepin, uh, uh, Venkov. Uh, and Polyvan. I, I, I don't remember all of them. But those years I were frequently, uh, I would frequently visit Leningrad, so I was very close to his colleagues and friends and all. You and Dr. John in the right yeah. corner? Yeah. Yes, the of course. <laughs> Here is the one, chairman. <laughs> so uh, at that time, uh, my uh, study was. Uh, closer to what they what you were doing because I was working on a uh, wave wave particle interaction that would be governed by non-linear non-local non-linear Schrodinger equations and I even I had um, a chance to solve it with some perturbation method but uh, so doing this similar thing like Zaharov but I was using uh, generalized Zaharov equations but late after those years gradually I kind of shifted my direction to more uh, like uh, 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 applicable realistic objects because all the referees would uh, write where do we find such you know uh, uh, objects and things like that so I started to learn some astrophysical things I started from um, uh, easiest I thought easiest uh, solar physics and then I moved to uh, general stellar uh, things and then at some stage uh, I got interested in uh, disk jet uh, formation problem and uh, since it is related <coughs> to some uh, analytical uh, approaches that we proposed and is b uh, I, uh, on the Beltrami uh, conditions, Bernoulli theory and uh, things like that, I decided uh, it was difficult for me to choose the subject for my talk here. So. 
at the end I decided so I better concentrate on this problem. Maybe it's also uh, a little bit spectacular and maybe somehow easier to be a, a presenter here among you that it's maybe very far from your interests. So I have, um, the initially we, we made uh, oh, sorry, uh, two papers with Professor Yoshida. He's from the University of Tokyo, the same place uh, our uh, previous um, lecturer was. Uh, it's just next uh, building sits from the Discovery Institute, so I often uh, get there, so it's a fantastic place. And another uh, um, co-author is Alexander Tezade from my uh, I, I, I'm chair of astrophysics, so he's, uh, he works with me there. So I want to give outline. Okay, no need of outline. I will just start from the from the very beginning. So what is uh, disk jet uh, structure? I mean, uh, you maybe all have seen uh, the jets uh, coming out from the nearby areas of. Uh, compact object, massive objects, or whatever, but disks are not easy to see. So, but um, uh, um, it's already well proven that uh, accretion disks, accre I mean not all disks are accretion, but accretion disks often are combined with uh, spindle-like jets uh, of ejecting gas, and uh, it becomes a typical structure that accompanies the massive objects of various scaling scales ranging from young stars to AGN. And mechanisms that rules each part of different system can be not universal. Here I give the neutron star uh, jet and disk, and here is the elliptical galaxy, galaxy uh, jet, and disks shall be here somewhere. So, mm, I mean, not always mm. seen in the same uh, <coughs> frequencies. And um, the macroscopic, uh, this is very macroscopic structure. So a macroscopic disk jet geometry, uh, uh, independent from all these scalings, uh, have a very marked similarity. And maybe starting from the uh, early 70s of previous century, uh, when, uh, when uh, the radio galaxies and quasars were discovered, uh, uh, it was evident that the jets in different classes of astrophysical uh, systems have direct association with accretion disks. But opposite is not true. In some objects, you, you may have accretion disks without collimated jets, because viscose transport or disk winds play the similar role in energy balance. So winds are uh, far from central object in the from the disk, coming out from the disk, but jets are uh, uh, from the center. This is a difference, in fact. So, uh, and this macroscopic disk jet geom geometry uh, uh, has a marked similarity, despite the huge variety of the scaling parameters like Lorentz factor, Reynolds number, Lundquist number, ionization fractions, and many other uh, parameters. And um, it is already known that in the disk region, transpose processes um, of mass, momentum, and energy depend strongly on the scaling parameters. And uh, classical processes uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, simple processes of viscosity are insufficient to account for the accretion rate, and turbulence trans transports must be invoked. Uh, uh, in addition, for powerful uh, uh, jets, winds may also remove the uh, angular momentum. And connection of the disk and the jet uh, is more co complicated. Mass and energy of jet are fed by the accreting flow of disk, uh, and uh, the mechanism how this transfer uh, occurs uh, is still not clear. I mean, uh, we, we pretend that we know how it happens, but uh, generally, it's not the final, uh, let's say, uh, clearance. Uh, the major constituent of the jets uh, is the material of accretion disk surrounding the central object. Uh, this, this one, uh, later at the end, I will speak about the protostellar jet. This one is the protos protostellar jet, and here is the uh, accretion disk uh, around the accreting young uh, stellar object. Uh, that is neutral, not charged. Uh, 
So what are the basic properties? I continue. Oh, here is the again the pulsar jet, pulsar jet. It has magnetic fields, strong magnetic fields. So the for, uh, for the fastest outflows, contributions may come also from the outer regions of the compact object, uh, outer regions of the disk as well as from the compact object. Uh, Livio suggested in '97. Uh, that powerful jets can be produced by a system in which on top of an accretion disk threaded by a vertical field there exists an additional source of energy and wind associated with the central object. La launching of an outflow from accretion disk requires a hot corona, corona of disk, and also can be assumed that ho extensive hot atmosphere around the co compact object can also provide the um, additional acceleration. So, you know, I want to specify here. Uh, some of the community members normally say the jet acceleration problem as if a jet existed and uh, then they are solving the acceleration of jet. But we uh, propose a different approach, uh, giving the um, uh, idea of uh, formation of disk jet structure. So uh, it's uh, one structure. So, like disk jet, and the acceleration is the next stage uh, of the formed jet, let's say. Because if nothing existed in, in that space, it cannot be accelerated. I mean, you need to eject some gas and then try to accelerate it. So, this um, accretion ejection process uh, gives you one structure and then uh, additional effects of some other physical um, properties can give you extra acceleration. Uh, so uh, uh, it's also believed uh, that magnetic fields are playing uh, a very important role in defining the local accretion. This is disk, here is the compact star, and these are magnetic fields uh, threading the disk. And b due to the accretion, uh, the field lines are directed to the center, you can see. So uh, plus uh, it's uh, rotation also. So. Uh, uh, when magnetic field is advected inwards by the accretic material or generated locally by some mechanism, jet along the magnetic field lines uh, can become superalphanic. And aging jets, there is an alternative idea uh, based on the electrodynamical processes extracting energy from rotating black hole. This is a very famous work of Blendford and Znacek. Um, and e extragalactic radio jets, these two uh, classes are very powerful uh, and hot uh, jets, might be accelerated uh, by highly disorganized magnetic fields. Uh, and here the Lorentz factors and many other parameters play a role. But I will be speaking about the universal mechanism where I don't need all these additional effects. So, in addition to the energetics uh, to account for the acceleration of this ejecting flow, we have to explain how the streamlines or magnetic field lines change the topology through the disk jet connection. So, correct uh, theory must explain also this connection. It's not that you just give the uh, model. So, um, uh, so, our proposition is that this jet system is a generalized Beltrami vortex. So uh, this, um, uh, this was the, uh, one of the pioneering uh, paper of Blandford and Pine, also next one by Begelman. It's still, uh, all these uh, theories are based on having uh, strong magnetic fields, but we saw that the collimated structure of jet is a natural consequence of the alignment of the flow velocity and the vorticity. It's so-called Beltrami condition, the term, the term is the structure, and there is no requirement of having a magnetic field, that's the universal. So, uh, on a Keplerian thin disk, the vorticity becomes a vertical vector with magnitude proportional to this value. Uh, I am covering it, sorry, sorry. Uh, myself, I hear, so, but it's not uh, for the recording, yes? Oh, sorry, yeah. So, uh, and uh, alignment is the unique solution for avoiding the singularity of Cor Coriolis force near the center. Uh, but, you know, speaking about the vorticity, we, we need to explicitly de define which type of vorticity. So, in our model, vorticity is uh, generalized appropriately uh, by dissipation in the disk. So, the dissipation that causes the accretion. So, simplest uh, theory, 
MHD model. And it's, uh, it's not even MHD because my, my disk is practically very heavy, low, low ionization. So in fact, it is neutral here. The equations are neutral here. So my title is wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. So this momentum, P is momentum. And here is the mo equation of motion. Rho is mass, V is flow velocity. P is effective viscosity tensor, phi gravity potential, and here are given the uh, normalization parameters. And uh, V dot and uh, rho dot are the representative flow velocities of the disk. So remember I mentioned that the uh, jet is fed by the matter and energy of disk. So we are normalizing to the disk background parameters so that we could track what would happen later. Uh, so. Uh, uh, some manipulation with equations gives uh, this equation where um, uh, omega 2 is the so-called generalized uh, uh, vorticity uh, and it um, uh, brings the impact of the dissipation. Dissipation is here as you can, I might see. Uh, uh, we shall show the generalized Bentrami condition demanding uh, omega dot to be parallel to uh, P, P2 is a unique um, uh, condition to avoid the singular energy density. I don't remember if I introduced uh, what was row one and row, row, row two. Okay. So uh, row one is the, I, I split row here. Sorry, I missed here. Um, I introduced uh, two parameters. So density is split in two. So in conventional, you have row one, the end row two is uh, in one. So when with, with no dissipation, row two goes to one. But with dissipation, this one carries the information about the dissipation. So, mm, uh, so uh, with no viscosity, row one is one. So, the, so and uh, uh, correspondingly, you have P2 and P1 with row two and row one. So, so preserving this barotropic re relation, is that a good approximation? Uh, can be. Can be. If, if you have slow accretion and slow density variation, it can be. Yeah. And in, for, for such system, it's okay. It's not, it's not charge. I mean, I try to uh, speak about the universal uh, property. And the, uh, the charge is the next step. Yeah. So, so P2 is defined by rho2 and uh, P1 uh, is by rho2. V stays the same. Velocity is the same. Yes, so, so the, the requirement, op, requirement of having this left-hand side zero, that is Beltrami condition, uh, is the possibility of avoiding the singularity. So, uh, so the, uh, since we are speaking about the slow accretion, so the mean velocity in the, uh, in the disk is the toroidal one, uh, the V theta, yes, a cylindrical geometry. Uh, and uh, if you if you introduce the uh, viscosity, then you have uh, Vr also appearing with uh, with it's still smaller than V theta, but the accretion is due to the Vr, so it goes to center. So it's like uh, uh, slowly you have uh, material coming close to center, but th due to the singularity, it has to go somewhere. Uh, it cannot uh, go to the exact zero. So. Uh, this is the singularity. So you need to break matter from disk to somewhere, and the jet is a natural consequence of this breaking. Uh, so, uh, so it's an estimation here given if, if since uh, our accretion is small, and normally it is like that, this uh, dissipation is not so strong. Uh, the f uh, flow in the disk is primarily azimuthal, and uh, viscosity uh, force can be approximated, and then this, uh, the, the, this can. <coughs> This can be shown that is proportional. Uh, see, this is uh, this is the proportionality, and eta is some uh, local viscosity coefficient uh, representing the viscosity. So, if one compares to p, then we can uh, uh, change this term by this value. So, where we put uh, new to be positive. So. Uh, and this viscosity force is again primarily azimuthal. And uh, if one goes to, the, to this equation, you see that we can uh, find the solution when this term vanishes. So, so the viscosity defines the 
uh, extra term uh, for in a, this is the inertia part of the inertia term due to the dissipation rho rho one uh, p one the p two is uh, defined by rho two so if one uh, uh, assumes that this uh, entire term vanishes so viscosity is balanced by the partial inertial term uh, mm, uh, and uh, also invoking the uh, continuity equation. This is steady state solution. Uh, one can uh, uh, come to this uh, kind of the relation and this is the uh, final relation that defines the uh, this rho 2 by local viscosity. So this, de this is the determi determination of rho 2 by local viscosity. And after some algebra you can also estimate rho 1. So after these estimations, uh, uh, we also speak about the um, poloidal components that becomes the defining for uh, jet. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, the vorticity includes, uh, the, the conventional vorticity includes the singularity. And to eliminate the divergence of this uh, left-hand side of that equation, uh, uh, these two uh, vector fields must align each other, that is the Beltrami condition. And after this alignment, uh, you are left with Bernoulli condition, that is again generalized because of the dissipation. Remember, rho 2 is now uh, bringing the um, uh, local dissipation information. So at the end, uh, we have the determining equation, uh, some type of artificial rho 2 for given uh, local viscosity, uh, velocity field, and uh, uh, equation for enthalpy. So these are three equations to be solved. Uh, these are all estimations I give. And I want to give here some um, remark that if we would start from uh, the conventional vorticity, then uh, that would mean that we don't have local accretion. The, the, so that means that you could arrive to the in adequate condition uh, for Keplerian flow. So the co conventional Beltrami condition would not give any uh, jet solution. So we need to generalize uh, this condition. And our equation was exactly the generalized case because it was with uh, uh, P2 and omega 2. So you have the information coming from dissipation. So that includes uh, uh, the local viscosity effects. So th then uh, this, uh, uh, this type of generalized Beltrami condition give you uh, the uh, consistency with the disk jet structure formation. So here is uh, uh, briefly shown that if one um, uh, um, the our, our um, uh, momentum field is divergence free because uh, we are speaking about the steady state solutions. So if we split this uh, momentum field in, the, uh, in uh, let's say this is the toroidal field and this is the poloidal field, introducing the stream <coughs> function, then one can solve the equations and um, here you see the momentum field distribution, here the density, and here is the total density, and uh, uh, here we have introduced the um, orthogonal uh, uh, variables like tau that defines mostly the jet structure and sigma that is uh, working mostly in the disk. They are orthogonal, and we could find this, uh, let's say, universal solution for very, very simple model of uh, um, type I showed above. I mean, we just estimated the local viscosity. Uh, but, uh, you know, this was very mathematical, so all the astrophysicists want to compare with realistic objects. So they want to show them that this type of solution coincides with the realistic concrete objects. So Where? Ah, uh, so double, double S. Yeah. No, no A. <laughs> sorry, misspelled. Sorry. You, I. No, no. <laughs> no, it's me. <laughs> yeah, but. You know. <laughs> so, uh, this, this was kind of a universal minimal model where we could uh, uh, show that uh, narrowly collimated jet is a unique structure that is uh, amenable to the singularity of the Keplerian vorticity. And the Beltrami condition, alignment of the flow and generalized vorticity, characterizes the geometry of the disk that stru structure. Uh, and we could find the analytic uh, solution. Uh, 
uh, very simple with the similarity um, uh, uh, solution uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so the important here is that instead of I introducing magnetic field, we worked with vorticity. So vorticity plays here the same role as magnetic field in all those uh, blend world, Begelman and other theories. And uh, in reality, many disks do not have magnetic field. So, uh, but uh, but the model has to be some min minimal model has to show the universal character of this type of structure. But as I said, uh, mm, uh, um, this was not enough. You know, m most of mathematical journals accept such papers, but uh, astrophysical journals do not accept if you don't show the exact parameters. Uh, of jet or something, so um, uh, um, uh, we had to. Can you yeah. Your, uh, in order to generalize, uh, to have a generalized description of the Boltrami condition, you have to invent this generalized partition, right? And your omega two is this one. Omega two is this one. Yes. Yeah. Omega two is uh, this one. Uh, oh no, this this is omega two. Yeah. In this index is missing. Yes. So omega two is this one. So this one has to be parallel to the, this one. So this is the generalized condition. In fact, it is reduced because in a way uh, it's not uh, related to the total momentum or total density. You see, you have the reduced part of the density, only this one. Yeah. Uh, to have the total density and total momentum, you must have both. So it's kind of a reduced that, that carries only the information about the dissipation. But row one follows. I showed you the condition that uh, they are linked to each other. Uh, yeah, so the vorticity plays the role of the magnetic field. And if you have charged disks, then, then you may have some additional effects. Uh, and those would work for uh, next step, as I said. Oh, uh, those would work for next uh, let's stage acceleration and not deformation. I mean, for formation error, you don't need magnetic field. So the, the other additional effects will work for acceleration. So this is what is the calculation of this simple model. That these are the streamlines. And uh, we could show that the generalized Beltrami flow. This is generalized Beltrami flow, so P2. So uh, it's a, this, the, this just system can be modeled like this. But uh, to convince the astrophysical community, you need to go to the realistic object. So for that, you have to invoke uh, some uh, uh, physics uh, that would bring uh, uh, physics mostly to the central, uh, the, the, the area to the central object, like whole term or turbulent viscosity or many other uh, effects that are very physical, yes. So, and you need to also connect uh, uh, two uh, decoupled uh, uh, systems like jet and uh, um, this, or disk and jet. And for this, you need to invoke uh, uh, concrete object uh, uh, reality, let's say. But up to now, I was not speaking about the contribution of central object. I will not speak up to the end, because central object is, uh, is even more next step. Because uh, the main uh, thing is uh, disk and jet is material and energy comes from disk and not the central object. These are only pulsar and AGN jets where you can imagine that central object can contribute, otherwise not. Uh, so, and this was the idea with uh, the Jitevzadze joined us and we thought about the concrete uh, Her Herbiharo uh, young stellar objects, uh, many, many type of young stellar objects uh, that are characterized by uh, outflows, bipolar outflows. And um, uh, these collimated bipolar outflows from young stellar objects are known to be parsec scale, non-relativistic, and supersonic. And they are, their uh, velocities are within these uh, values. And uh, these jets are launched in the vicinity of protostar. And protostar is the is the star that, that continues accretion. So the, in the evolution of protostar, you may observe the jet uh, launching. So uh, accretion goes on and uh, also star evolutes, I mean it accretes, and uh, uh, parallel uh, you may observe the uh, jet formation. Uh, uh, also the molecular clouds exhibit such type of collimated jets 
And today we know exactly that morphology, sizes and velocities of the jet power flows can be used to estimate the mass, luminosity or age of the ESO. So it's even opposite. So if you can uh, observe and detect such type of jets, uh, their parameters can show you the parameters of the star a critic star or disk so so uh, or disk so it's interesting to solve this problem uh, so uh, what else uh, this I don't want so. yeah so there were uh, several parameters of uh, papers followed uh, following these observations that use self-similar solutions to model uh, this type of structures or specifically to model the jet velocity and um, there were some studies that we are using some instability theories to uh, construct the bipolar uh, jet outflows. But instability mechanisms cannot explain long-lived steady structure. They can explain some bursts that are short-lived. So we wanted to show that we can explain more long-lived uh, steady structure like disk jets are. So, uh, and uh, uh, Shakura and Suliev in these early years after the observations uh, um, suggested um, some special um, uh, viscous accretion disk models and the uh, community would think that it was natural to assume that jets are driven magnetically from the accretion disk. disk. So when this uh, magnetic field is advected inwards, by the accreting material or some generated uh, locally magnetic fields, the centrifugal force due to rotation may boost the jet along the magnetic field lines, even up to super alphenic speed. So, but in this model, again, the magnetic field is uh, necessary to have. Uh, later on, uh, Blandford and Pine studied the magnetocentrifugal acceleration, again, uh, having the magnetic fields and um, they were the first to show, theoretically, breaking of the matter in the azimuthal direction inside of this and outflow acceleration and showed uh, the conditions for the collimation of the flow. You know, in this problem, it is not uh, necessary to solve the formation problem only. You need to also show the uh, collimation of the jet. Jets are very collimated, long uh, structures and hot and uh, fast and uh, this collimation stands for long. So uh, sometimes some solutions showed uh, the formation but jets would break immediately. So you need to also have it for a long time and collimate, collimate it. So uh, collimation mechanisms can differ from the formation mechanism. So uh, there are some other models, uh, Bledford, Znacek, and uh, these other models. And uh, angular momentum energy and mass can be removed from the accretion. And they were all showing how the angular momentum, uh, mass, and energy were removed from the disk. And the uh, jet was fitted by that. Uh, um, so co collimation can be provided by stratified thermal pressure from the external medium and acceleration efficiency depends on the pressure gradient of the medium in all these theories. So, so we studied all this material for concrete objects and um, we uh, started to invoke our this uh, simple universal 2011 model to the realistic object of ESOS, uh, invoking the turbulent viscosity of Shakura and Tsunyaev. Uh, that was uh, that could work as a main reason for the accretion, and this was assumed unmagnetized, so no pre-existed global magnetic field. So the uh, the theory is the, is the same. I mean, we mm, uh, have the same equation, but for concrete object, the normal it's again barotropic. H uh, now capital H is the enthalpy. Normalization is similar, so we split our density in. Uh, here we started to call to use uh, more like uh, physical uh, notations, like rho one that was conventional uh, is uh, rho ideal, and uh, rho two now becomes rho reduced. So then you introduce p ideal and p reduced, and you have similar equation for um, uh, motion. But the, now important is to define, determine correctly the viscosity term. So again, invoking this uh, Beltrami condition, 
and trying to when, uh, make this, this, uh, this term zero, we can define the um, a local uh, viscosity. So I derive to the Bernoulli condition. Uh, so we employ the viscosity model when the small scale turbulence creates the anomalous dis the dissipation that can be described by using the alpha viscosity model of Shakura and Sinjaev. But we went a little bit further. Uh, so we assumed that uh, the disk uh, velocity field is mostly azimuthal. So in, t uh, in um, uh, viscosity term, uh, you have only these components left. And then we introduce background constant pressure that will be uh, directly linked to Shakura Sinjaev. And we add here the perturbation so essentially term. This is, uh, Sorry? Essentially, this is Sinjaev Shakura and cylinder, right? Possibly, I don't know. You know, uh, this uh, this came to us gradually. We first started without p dot, thinking that everything will be inside. But uh, uh, strangely, uh, analysis gave uh, uh, not realistic. I mean, p was coming to be negative. So, but at the end, uh, also physically, you need to have something background. Uh, to have the Keplerian disk, you know, not always you have the uh, dissipation. So the Keplerian disk sol solution must be there too. So the P dot serves for that, and uh, P dot, uh, but P dot now here also uh, is a little bit generalized by Shakura Sinev. And adding the P, you have a generalization due to the uh, turbulent viscosity. So then, uh, so this uh, uh, alpha do dot and P dot give you this um, Shakura and Sunyaev solution. And then uh, assuming uh, a flow to be axisymmetric, uh, rotating locally with Keplerian uh, 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 angular velocity, you know, locally it's Keplerian. But due to the viscosity, it slowly accretes to the compact object. So at every ring you have Keplerian. I'm just but, curious, so, but this flow shouldn't be the way like, to know in the sun differential. Right? So? Like, uh, this, uh, if you slice this, the yeah, yeah. like th those flows that are uh, along the lines, usually like in the sun, the people I think assume them differential dependent. No, no. The, the differential rotation uh, in sun uh, uh, is no, working no, no, in, in, in the equator lines. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. yeah. So in the, this case, uh, if you if you start from very small alpha, and observation shows that this uh, Shakura Sunev coefficient alpha is very small, ten to the minus three, even smaller. So and uh, uh, so so if it is very slow accretion, you, you can assume that locally you have uh, Kepler. Yeah, that, that, that I'm telling. Yeah. So locally you can, but but uh, it's still varying. Yeah. So uh, after introducing this, uh, let's say constraint, you can estimate uh, the mm, uh, uh, the tensor of viscosity. You see, this is Shakura Sinyavi, this is the, uh, let's say, new term. And then you find these um, uh, components. And uh, as I said, slowly accreting flow, uh, minimal uh, model gives you P dot. And then again, invoking this um, uh, factorization by poloidal and uh, toroidal um, components of the velocity field. And uh, by the way, uh, this stream function uh, exactly matches the actual momentum field. And this condition of uh, realizability, remember I said that viscosity term has to be balanced by the partial inertia term. This is the condition. So it's dependent on beta. The beta now plays the role of uh, generalized alpha, let's say. And uh, so if you, if you take beta zero, that means dissipation zero, you don't have any uh, any condition for that. Yes. So the also P P R is constant. Rho, rho R becomes constant, not locally defined. Rho R becomes uh, a one. So it's zero to zero. So uh, the and Bernoulli, uh, generalized Bernoulli condition is written like this for total mechanical ener energy is written here, and uh, generalized Beltrami condition is here. Extra terms are here, and you have uh, all the, all the equations to define the flow. So this is one, uh, this is two, and this is three with this e epsilon em. And um, to, to try to solve these um, equations, uh, we go to similarity variables, again orthogonal, the similar way, like in the minimal model. 
Uh, it's obvious that uh, gravity depends only on sigma, on the disk parameter. And uh, also, mm, the psi is only tau dependent in this model because of slow accretion. And then one can separate the variables in the solution. So this uh, condition, uh, balancing condition, is this one. And Beltrami conditions can be written in these two, two equations, and the Bernoulli conditions in these two. And all of these equations are the full set. And we, we had to work to solve on that. And um, mm, so mm, uh, uh, in the similarity variables, we can split the pressure and two type of uh, densities. And this is Beltrami <coughs> parameter. And um, azimuthal velocity, as I said, locally Keplerian. So this is the one. And uh, our estimations give this type of dependencies of sigma for sigma parts of these parameters. And introducing this function, uh, I mean, this, uh, this was a guess. I mean, there were several suggestions, and finally, this, this uh, type of function worked. We arrived to the defining equation. So, this is the equation solving of which gives you the final structure. And remember our row two, uh, uh, yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. Uh, row 2 is now the tau dependent only. The sigma dependent ones are 1 with the index. So solving this uh, equation, you arrive to the structure solution. And uh, apparently there were three uh, uh, solutions of this equation. The one that was mm, uh, beta, beta equals to zero gives you one solution that uh, corresponds to the background dissipation model and two separate solutions for the dissipative, dissipative flow in the disk and the jet. So here are the estimations for small beta, small uh, accretion. So this is uh, W plus and W minus. And uh, uh, combining this uh, sigma dependent and tau dependent parts, you arrive to the uh, defining parameters of the entire. Uh, so th th this set is the final solution, but we need to, we need to find w, w functions. Uh, so the appropriate choice of w will give you the final, st final structure. And uh, by the way, here we. Uh, show uh, the character of the solution. So you have one solution that is a radial vertical accretion flow uh, that is represented by W plus with uh, Vr negative and Vz negative. So flow is accreting and also squeezed to the central uh, plane. And another solution is uh, radial vertical ejection. So the accretion flow and the ejection flow. This corresponds to disk and this corresponds to jet. So with W minus, so we R and we Z are both negative. And then we could manage to calculate uh, the dependence of Beltrami parameter on, on all the uh, disk parameters, depending on the disk parameters. And interestingly, both uh, solutions of lambda grow with beta, beta. This is the disk solution and this is the jet solution. For disk, you see that for rather long, uh, uh, period of tau, it stays very small, but jet solution grows. So, and here is the final solution represented. So this is disk flow, and it's uh, 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 proportional to beta, you see, and uh, this is uh, Vr and Vz, so disk has Vr and Vz. Uh, v theta is Keplerian, we know. So, and for jet, it has uh, Vr and Vz uh, inversely proportional to beta. So, your small beta gives you very strong uh, uh, jet flow. And sigma dependence is the same. So, uh, to get the disk, but, but, but we need to have a one structure, so it must be continuous because it is for velocity field, remember. Uh, you cannot have jumps in the velocity field if it is a physical solution. So, for physical solution, uh, we need to connect all these three solutions. So here is the uh, picture. So this is disk, this is jet. And as you can see, because uh, there was a solution with beta equals zero, so any, uh, uh, any W is okay. 
So uh, in this region, flow goes ballistically to the jet. So this is this region, and uh, because uh, for beta equals zero, uh, your equations uh, are valid for any w, so it goes ballistically to the jet solution. So this is uh, how it looks like. So, but this is now a more realistic picture of generalized vortex. Yes, and uh, <coughs> sorry. Is it already full magnetohydrodynamics? No, no, it's still neutral. Because I don't see any field. Right? Yeah, no, no, it's still uh, neutral. So you can see that you don't need any magnetic field. If you properly invoke the accretion, local accretion, you will have uh, uh, this uh, vortex playing the role of magnetic field. I mean, they are, uh, one can uh, in some way imagine that B plus Karlov V is a generalized uh, vortex or generalized magnetic field. So you make one of these uh, zero, another part works. So you don't need to have B if you have Karlov V, whatever of type. So this is the accretion velocity estimated, again, proportional to beta and tau dependent. So this is, uh, these two, two fields are combined, uh, drawn here. And this is the ejection velocity, <coughs> inversely proportional to beta and both proportional to Keplerian velocity. So in low beta limit, uh, uh, the derived solution gives you this uh, jet structure that corresponds to the slowly accreting flow in the disk with fast fl outflow in the jet area. Sorry. And this uh, solution matches the properties of astrophysical accretion ejection flows. And it is important that this solution that, uh, um, uh, do not depend on the explicit profile of the tau dependent part of density. So any um, uh, function that would properly show the disk jet structure density could work. So this was this uh, freedom uh, that uh, made us, uh, let's say, happy. So also decreasing beta leads to increase of ratio between vertical and uh, this part. But the transition region is yeah. chosen, is put by them? No. It's defined by the viscosity. It's everywhere the beta. It's not uh, 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 by hand. So th there were three solutions of that equation. So, yeah. yeah. Quadratic equation. Right? I mean, it's beta equals zero. Is big, beta equals zero is a solution. So we missed first, you know, this one. And we thought it, these are the only two solutions. But at the end, we realized uh, redefining the function. When we introduced this function, uh, remember I told you there were several. Oh, this one. This one was introduced in a different way before. It included beta, and we lost that solution. But then we made it free from uh, beta, and then you, you came up to this equation. So the beta equals 0 is a solution. When beta equals zero, there is no equation on W. So that was an interesting point, you know. As a, we missed one solution uh, in the beginning, but then, then, then we, uh, I found this uh, uh, representation for W. So then I, this... I would think about this as, if beta equal to zero, there is no equation on W, so w, you don't have an equation. No, but you want. Uh, you want so any W can work. For this connection, area. for one value of parameter of equation, which is beta equal zero, any w is a solution. This was the main guess here. What in was fact. the definition of beta? It was not alpha zero. Is a, no, alpha zero extended, generalized alpha zero with all the r and z dependent. Ah, it's proportional. Correct. It is proportional to uh, no, no alpha zero is an extra uh, next term. I can come back if you want. It, there are two, two proportional, but it is R and Z dependent. It's a local. Beta is a local parameter. So that was the interesting finding, by the way. So that is why, because the any, any W can work in, in this area. So because uh, the requirement that the continuity, uh, the ca continuity velocity field must be provided. I mean, the velocity field is a physical field. So you must have it continu continuous. So this is like ballistic flow, 
and uh, where did I show here? So as I told, uh, that that picture is independent of rho, rho tau. So you can uh, invoke any rho that will be realistic for disk jet. So uh, invoking uh, our let's say ten years before finding uh, of rho. This is in, uh, this is the idea. But we added also tau zero to avoid uh, the divergence. Uh, it was for. Uh, for avoiding the divergence at tau equals zero. Tau was z over r, remember, so tau can be zero at z uh, zero, but it never happens in fact because there is a compact object there. So, uh, so flow avoids compact objects, so it never happens, but, but for simulation it was necessary to invoke this. So and these are two sets of these uh, powers, and the, as you can see the second set gives you very similar picture to disk jet for density. So if you invoke this row in those uh, definitions, uh, self-similar definitions for physical parameters, you can arrive to the final, final solution. So and uh, mm, this, uh, those final uh, definitions we are by four equations if you remember, 39 and 45 is this for density. And this is the self-similar Beltran flow uh, that represents the disk jet. So we need to also show the ratio, if it is a real uh, fast flow, to, to show how the uh, accretion and ejecting flow magnitudes uh, are dependent. Uh, it, uh, and those equations exactly give you, you see, remember it was one was uh, directly proportional to beta, another was uh, inversely, so if you uh, estimate this uh, ratio, you arrive that uh, beta square also defines this ratio between accretion velocity. And so uh, you reduce the beta and then you have a, a faster outflow. So the local is strange, but it's like that. So, so if you go to the realistic objects, um, uh, when beta is smaller than alpha, beta was local, I remember. So then you can estimate that uh, ejection uh, flow can be 10 to the 4 power uh, faster than accretion flow. And uh, I give below, uh, since you are not familiar with these community results, I give below some papers that are um, coinciding these results. So uh, to also illustrate, uh, yeah, major property was collimated outflow, long and accelerated uh, on this um, uh, one dimension. But so we had to give this uh, vertical flow distribution. I think I'm saving the time. I'm close to the end. So, uh, so uh, the outflow velocity is. Uh, uh, on this picture, we show that outflow velocity is maximal <coughs> near the central object. It's still big, but then at some uh, height, uh, height, it um, uh, starts to uh, decline. Let's say so. So it's clear now that there must be some other physical processes added to show that it uh, constantly accelerates and keeps its uh, uh, structure similar to observed structures. Uh, so, conclusion is that our solutions can describe the formation of this, this jet structure and not the further acceleration. For further acceleration of this foam jet and uh, further collimation, you need to add uh, the physics related to concrete objects. Like if you have a, a magnetized disks and the, uh, the properties from charge, uh, charged disks add, and also if you have relativistic uh, compact object, uh, you may have some extra sources coming from uh, uh, hot atmosphere or whatever, or corona or whatever. But uh, here, uh, as you can see, this is not fully uh, showing the um, long uh, like one dimension of jet structure. So uh, also uh, this, this, uh, this picture I show because the astrophysical community likes to speak in the Mach number languages, you know, the, uh, so they, <laughs> they don't like only pictures. They, they want to also track how the Mach number behaves. So this is the uh, estimated Mach number. And interestingly, in this dash that within, in this small narrow area, uh, the Mach number is uh, greater than one. So it shows you that our solution also 
explains the supersonic flow behavior uh, closer to the axis. So it was a good finding as well. So uh, this I don't want to talk about. Ah, here, here I give the papers, uh, the results of which match our uh, theoretical findings. So these are big uh, observations of ALMA on Herbihara objects, and also this uh, protostellar system uh, was um, well, uh, data were well studied in this paper recently, and all these data match our results, if you, get, if you take those boundary parameters uh, from those. Yeah, so, uh, so as you can see, the realistic disk jet system jet flow streaming away from the central object is likely to undergo cooling in reality. It's no, we didn't have any energy equation, if you remember. So if you, add, this was the simplest model. If you add uh, other transport equations, uh, the first one is uh, energy equation, then you may have cooling that will reduce uh, local sound speed. So then it, it, it will explain further uh, supersonic uh, acceleration uh, and or expansion or whatever many many things in the expansion words. Uh, so the, uh, I have two slides more, I guess, but a few words I will say. Uh, yeah. So I showed the decrease of the beta leads to the increase of the ratio uh, of uh, vertical and uh, um, uh, horizontal velocities and our discharge structure depends on the thermal properties of the disk flow, this is local, local alpha. And uh, in case of ESOS, our solution shows weaker jets at the later stage of the evolution of the protostar, when the temperature of the central object and corresponding disk matter increases. And this is the summary. So we constructed the analytic configuration of the hydrodynamic jet from young stellar objects using the Beltrami-Bernoulli flow model for this, this jet stru structure formation. And uh, we use the extended turbulent vis viscosity model. Well, extended, I mean, when I say extended, it was not exactly Shakura Sunyayev, but it was extended Shakura Sunyayev model. And the uh, derived solution describes the disk jet structure flow with jet, pr jet properties linked to the properties of the accretion disk flow. So all the solution carries the information from beta, that is uh, local property of the disk. So one can use these derived solutions to analyze the astrophysical jets from ESOS and link the properties of outflows with the local conditions at the inner edge of the accretion flows. This is our result. Uh, I think I don't need to speak about. Oh, yeah, these are about additional effects. So what, uh, if you want to move to relativistic jets or other objects, of course mathematics will be more difficult because relativity effects and others. We started with some students and I can tell you that uh, these new effects mostly uh, work on collimation. Uh, the disk jet is there. <coughs> But collimation can be provided uh, more strongly by the additional effects. And of course, everybody thanks my brother, but I want to thank, first of all, organizers, because they allowed me to be part of you this time. Because all my life I was part of my brother's life, you know. And somehow it happened that we are far from each other. And now I'm with you, with friends. <laughs> thank you. And, uh, <laughs> I want to thank him. I think he's the kindest person in the world. So he couldn't stand me here. <laughs> thank you. Some questions from reception? No. For me to be. Oh, please. No, it's very easy for you, I think. Yeah. More well, about this transition. So yeah. uh, there was the region of the transition and the was it totally fixed? Okay, well, it was. You had three solutions: so the yeah. equation. I, I'll come to this. Solution one to an intermediate mm -hmm. solution and to the. This is the equation, yes. So, so it's forced the, the the place where you go from the this solution to the intermediate solution is forced on you by the equations. Yeah, it's forced by the equations. No, it's uh, forced by equations, but freedom is, is in the choice. So what uh, the, if equation gives you concrete W at this place, 
and the equation gives you concrete W here, flow and must go ballistically to that point. And here, those, those regions the, where you make the transition, yeah. the place, yes. it's fixed? The, 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 we are not fixing it, the problem fixes them. Problem fixes them. And then when, when boats are fixed, I mean, they are dynamical in a way, depending on the parameters. So whatever this, uh, the parameters of the, of the physical parameters are given and these points are found, then flow must go ballistically to this place. So this was the idea. Other questions? Please. Just a generic question. I mean, can you choose your parameters that you can match this to the observed? Uh, it's like, you know, some of the parameters you pick up from the disk of those observations and then you define the beta and invoke here and then you get whatever you get. And uh, yeah, in the jet, yeah. So it matched jet. So from jet, you can go back and then uh, yeah, figure out what was there. So because the disks, uh, as you can see, are not so well seen, but uh, for disks are many theories, uh, you know. But, but in, in most of them, uh, I mean, it was a minimal set of equations. Of course, energy equation has to be added and many other. But uh, we wanted to show, I mean, with Yoshida, Yoshida is uh, partly mathematician, partly physical experimentalist, a great person. So with Yoshida, we discussed a lot for one year, spoke with all these, um, you know, people that do simulation. All this community mostly are based on simulation. So they have big codes and play with codes and whatever they get from code, it is for them the reality. So we spoke with them and we thought that it is, it is not possible that uh, code must give you realistic uh, uh, solutions. So we first estimated the local viscosity and we imagined that this has to be linked to the minimal. So in fact, uh, the minimal uh, model does not require all these complexities. So all the complex things give you extra acceleration, extra collimation or whatever. We, we are, I already gave to my diploma students uh, relativistic uh, uh, or two fluid effects, you know, charged fluid, two fluid, whatever. Th those uh, add to the collimation. Mathematically more difficult, so you need a lot of uh, uh, assumptions to do, but it's possible because of observations again. So you know observational features and then you do, then you use the assumptions. Yeah. So that anyway, the alpha parameter is better, you know, they fit into the data. That, that's the same yeah. but you have to have more features than that. <coughs> yes. That's what I want to know. Okay, if there's no other questions, let's take <coughs> another one. Thank you.